Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today's video is about chasing subjects. I've actually got a story to tell you, and I've got some images from that story. Now these images, they might make you cringe, so hang on and watch this one. Tell me what you think right after this. As with many of my Quick Thoughts videos, got a little bit of a backstory for you. So let me tell you that backstory about chasing subjects. And this backstory includes a few images that were sent to me that I think you're going to find really, really interesting. So this backstory comes from Barb, who's a patron member and a client. And she sent me a message and she said, hey, look what I experienced today. So she was out photographing elk. And this is what she dealt with. I'll show you some of the images are going to be over here. Uh, these are other wildlife photographers in the area. And notice the attempt to get closer. So, and this is the concept of chasing. You know, we, we want to get closer to our subjects. We know where the subject's at, so we are gonna, we're going to push ourselves there. I'm going to flash a few videos over here or a few images over here. I do want you to notice I blurred everybody out. Uh, this isn't to call out the ethics of photography per se. So I just want to make that clear. If you know who these people are, if one of them is you, not the point. The point is going to be around three concepts of chasing. One, the impact to the animal will certainly be mentioned in this. It's not an ethics video, so I don't want to get too much into the, the stress on the animal or the impact of it. I think it's pretty apparent when we do this that there's an impact to the animal. We're also going to talk quickly about the impact to other people there, so other photographers such as my client who's out there trying to get good pictures and just can't do it. Uh, the, the third thing, and since it's a photography-related channel, I do want to talk about just the images themselves. So let me just flash up a couple of these images that focus on the subject and look at the behavior of the subject here. Number one, the subject's been pushed into an area that is not very conducive for photography. So very sticky, very branchy, not good separation. The habitat itself isn't very pleasing. And as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, I'm a real proponent of the environment or seeing the whole frame of an image. Sometimes being in habitat can be very pretty when it's done well. Sometimes it can look really awkward, sticky, branchy, just not very beautiful. And in this case, we've we've got an elk that's in an area, beautiful elk, by the way, huge bull elk, um, not gonna photograph very well in this situation. So by approaching it, we've actually done a disservice to the animal, to the other photographers, but really to the photograph itself. What are you really gonna get? out of this photograph. As my client waited, as Barb sits there and thinks, I, I just gotta wait these guys out, I gotta try to get into a better area, the bull actually came out to probably where it wanted to go in the first place, and Barb gets this really beautiful image. Now in this image, she's by herself, the animal doesn't look like it has any stress or impact, and from a photography standpoint, look at the difference. We've got really great separation, really gorgeous light, by the way, and a tremendous image resulted. Now, as I saw these pictures for the first time, I, I cringed a little bit. And I'm kind of curious if that's your reaction for, for a variety of reasons. But did it make you cringe a little bit? And have you ever been in these situations where you have groups of photographers who are pushing onto subjects or, or forcing their presence? I, there's a... There's a concept about distance in, in photography, and a lot of people think, well, I've got a long lens, I don't need to be close. There are some huge advantages to being close to a subject from a, from a photography standpoint. However, in order to get that distance, the best way to do it is not to approach that subject because of all of the reasons you can see, the subject's behavior changes, and often we, we don't put it into an environment where it feels natural. From a photography standpoint, I would say almost exclusively the best photos I've, I've had are when I just sit and be patient. So I want to know your thoughts on this. Have you experienced this, this crowd phenomenon? Have you been resentful about it? Has it made you think like, oh, yeah, I wish these people would just figure it out. Like it's, it's affecting me personally as a photographer. It's affecting other people as photographers. It's affecting the subject. And what are they getting from it? Or like, are they even getting anything that's worthwhile. So again, how do you feel about this? And does it make sense from a photography standpoint? I want to show you a couple images. I'm going to pull a couple of my images up. I don't do a lot of uh, mammal photography or, or big game photography, but I can remember being in California. I was photographing some birds. I would take anything, elk, coyote. I mean, anything in that area, uh, I would have been very, very happy to photograph. And I saw a coyote. Now, this was a few years into photography. And by that point, I had already learned this lesson about chasing. It's, it's never going to give me the best results. 
So I saw a coyote. I could have pursued it. Uh, didn't think it was a good idea. So instead, what I did is I got ahead of it. I just went, I just kind of disappeared. I went ahead to where I thought it would end up. And the coyote came over the hill. Now, listen, this isn't a work of art, but it's a very nice photo. At some point, the coyote recognized me, maybe my scent, or it could have seen, you know, some slight movement. It turned its head, but I got a, a very, what I think is a very good photo. Um, and no impact on the animal. No other photographers around. I wasn't pushing the animal away from them. Um, and, and I think photographically, it came out pretty good. So I liked this one. I also had um, another experience where I was shooting mammals. Uh, this, In this case, a big game, a megafauna. This is a muskox in Alaska. And once we had seen the muskox, it was a decision. You know, how do we maximize the opportunity? And we decided to just stay and wait. It took a while. It was pretty far away, but we didn't chase after it. We didn't want to alert it to our presence. So we just kind of laid down behind this uh, purple plant, this fireweed, and we just waited for him to come. Now, eventually he got close enough that we were like, might be time to get out of here because these aren't necessarily shot with the longest lenses. I, we may have been shooting um, some shorter focal lengths for this, but regardless, it was, it was, there was a time to go and we got out. But the key was we waited for the animal. We waited for the subject to come to us, to approach us. And we got a much more natural shot. Now, this applies specifically to birds as well. So as a bird photographer, I'm going to show you a couple examples of bird images. These taken back in 2015. I'd been birding for a couple years. I've been doing photography for about a year and a half, maybe two at the most. But uh, listen, two years in, and I've always said it takes about four or five years to be good if you do it a lot. It wasn't great. So I was at the beach and an avocet came up. This is kind of what the avocet looked like. And it was the only avocet I'd ever worked with at the time. And, you know, there's there's this idea that I, I need to get a good shot of this animal. So I'm going to move to one side and try to get it. And he's going to move. And then I'm going to move over there. And he's going to move. And I'm going to move. And it just didn't result in much. If anything, you could see these images aren't great. I want you to notice this flight shot. Because this flight shot, the bird's actually going away. Which is what subjects want to do when they're under any kind of pressure. Now, I don't think personally at that time... I don't think I was creating any great stress on it. By the way, the elks I showed you earlier, pretty used to humans. So I'm not saying that there's a tremendous pressure on them, that they're being stressed out so that they're not eating or behaving in the way they normally would. But there's an alertness. And in this case of the Avocet, there's an alertness. It certainly knew I was there. So let's fast forward to this 2023 when I'm making the video. Let's fast forward to 2023. Um, I'm out with Avocet again. I'm a much better photographer. And let me show you some of the images and where this started. Now, the light is significantly better. So I've also learned at this time in my career, 10 years in, to appreciate light. If you've ever watched my videos, you know that that is always something I like to try to stress and emphasize how important light is. But from a behavioral standpoint, I'm just there. Now, there's an intimacy created when a subject is performing natural behaviors. There's also an intimacy for me personally when there's not other people around. I happen to be shooting with another photographer. And I will say, in those moments where there's this intimacy, having somebody else can be comforting, provided they have a like mindset. So the, in this case, I was very fortunate. Um, I shoot with this photographer I've, I have before, and we both have this idea that it's just patience. Just sit and wait it out. Let's see what happens. And all of a sudden, the Avocet are coming so close. They're within minimum focus, walking right at the lens. Uh, some of these images not uncropped. And I want to show you the difference in these two flight sh uh, shots that I got. Notice one is almost coming at the lens. Guys, sideways, but, but angled just a little bit at the lens, which is ideal. In the other case, it's angled away. And of course, you know, as a, being a better photographer, the light's better, the environment's better, the perspective's better. But just look at the behavior of the animal. Which one looks more natural? Which one looks better? Just from the subject's behavior. So a couple things about this, you know, about this chasing. Number one, uh, I would love to know your thoughts on the, on the images I showed you. Again, I blurred everybody out, not to call out individual photographers, not to call out unethical behavior per se, but just around the results. Like I showed you the results and how much different that subject looked when you just leave it and let it behave and capture the moment, how much better that can be. Um, but I do want to talk, you know, if you want to put it down in the comments about impact on subjects, I think, I think sometimes we underestimate our impact. I think sometimes we may actually overestimate it. We may be a little oversensitive, but it's, 
it takes a lot of experience to understand. And so I think a lot of new photographers may underestimate their impact. And again, sometimes we may, we may overestimate how much impact we have when we do it the right way. So I think wildlife photography can be done in the right way. It's video for another day. I, I, I've always said every wildlife photographer impacts the environment and they impact their subjects. We just have to figure out what's right, what's what we're comfortable with. Number two on this video, what about the impact of the other people there? Again, why I don't like to photograph in crowds because a lot of times you just get frustrated. There's other people kind of ruining things for you. What you'd like to happen doesn't happen. Um, and it doesn't take that many other photographers to do this. It can be just a handful of, or even another photographer sometimes can really kind of ruin the day for you. So the impact on other people there, uh, on other photographers. And then thirdly, the impact on the photograph itself, the final image. Will chasing birds, will chasing mammals, will chasing these wildlife subjects, will you get better shots from it? Will you get better final images? And I got to believe the answer is almost exclusively, almost 100% of the time, the answer is no. So think about this video the next time you're out. Think about your impact on the subject, but also think about, am I going to maximize the photography side of this if I'm pushing and chasing? So a lot to talk about in this video, but I wanted to share it. It's a quick thoughts video. I wanted to share this story, wanted to show you these images, wanted to talk about the concepts. Most importantly, with these quick thoughts videos, I want to get your feedback. So down in the comments, let me know if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the little subscribe button over there and the bell for notifications will let you know when I have a new video coming out. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.